Call up meeting of County Council of Order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. If you don't see them, there are two flags up here to our right, your left. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming. Optional prayer, Mrs. Lowell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let us pray. Against all odds, seeds grow, yeast rises, and love abounds. We see all that God has created with his strength and his mighty power. We confess we are still divided, and our brokenness is often perceived as a counter witness to the world. We pray that we discover the unity of the world and pray for the still imprisoned by their own prejudice and pride. Help us to be reconciled with what has happened in the past so that we may face a future with hope and grace. Melt our hearts and consume the pride and prejudice that separate us. We ask this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Roll call, please, Mr. Smith. Mr. Anderson? Here. Mrs. Fatika? Here. Mr. Horton? Here. Mr. Leone? Here. Mrs. Law? Here. Mr. Rastetter? Here. Dr. Faust? Here. At this uh, time, Mr. Leon would like to make a few remarks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, tonight I'm going to remark about my good friend, Flo Fabrizio. Today, Flo passed away. He was a true public servant. He died at the age of 73. Flo was born in Erie, November 1st, 1944. He graduated from Strong Vincent High School in 62, graduated from Pennsylvania State University in 66 with a Bachelor of Arts and received a Master's in Education in 69. Flo was a teacher for six years in the Erie School District before becoming a stockbroker in 1973. He was chosen as the clerk of court, or I'm sorry, clerk of county council in 1982. Flo served for 20 years in that position with a booming voice and a rat-tat-tat reading style of ordinances and resolutions that could not be matched for speed or accuracy. He played a significant role in the development of county council as an institution and equal branch of county government and the home rule system during his 20 years of county service. After 20 years of service, <coughs> Flo decided to run for the state in the second legislative district. He beat an incumbent by 309 votes in 2002 primary. He was unopposed in the 2002 general election and received the oath of office January 7, 2003. Flo won seven consecutive House races. He was chair to the joint state Government Commission from 2009 to the present during his years in, in the Pennsylvania House, which is 15 plus years. In April 2017, Representative Fabrizio announced that he had been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, but vowed to keep on working. In January of this year, he announced that he would not seek another term. Flo leaves behind his wife, Vicki, and his daughter from a previous marriage, and also two of Vicky's sons from this particular marriage. Flo Fabrizio, born 1944, died July 24, 2018. Rest in peace, I'd like to have at least a moment of silence for him. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Leon. God bless him. <coughs> Mrs. Lowe, would you like to make uh, some welcoming remarks? Tonight? Yes, uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome everybody here tonight. Uh, this is why we go on the road so that we can get people that are in the area to uh, come and see how we conduct meetings and, and who we are. And I'd like to thank Ann Marie. She's our branch manager here. She's over there in the back. And she was uh, very kind to uh, open it up and we have us here tonight. And uh, so thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Hearing of the public, anybody that called in ahead of time would have five minutes. Nobody did so this week. 
anybody thereafter uh, or anybody tonight that would like to speak, you'll have three minutes. Uh, there is a podium here, but it's a small room. So if you did want to speak, if you just want to, if you feel comfortable just standing where you are, if you could just give us your name and municipality where you live, is that okay with you, by the way? Um, and then uh, no problem, we'll take you all. You don't have to feel rushed. Is there anybody that would like to address council tonight on any particular issue? <coughs> Go ahead, right ahead, sir. If you could stand for us, just give us your name and municipality. My name is Carl Eber. I'm, a, I'm an elected auditor from Franklin Township. Um, I want to tell you a series of events that you should know because it does reflect on Erie County, and I don't like the way it did reflect on Erie County. In 2006, there were no special levy tax funds on the audited statements for Franklin Township. 2007, our property taxes doubled. Every taxpayer was given a, a notice saying that the reason for doubling the taxes was for a road graveling program. If you look at the audited financial statements for 2007, there's a special levy tax fund that is approximately half of the total revenue from property taxes. The same uh, equation goes through 2008 through 2015. A special levy tax fund from tax revenue that's approximately 50% of the total tax revenue collected in that year. In 2016, that special levy tax fund disappeared from the records. I went back and I looked at audited financial statements. I looked at monthly reports that were posted on a website. That website has disappeared. It's not there anymore. If you look at transfers from the special levy tax fund to the general fund and transfers from the general fund back to the special levy tax fund, add them up and compare them. You'll find that the transfers from the special levy tax fund to the general fund are about $44,000 higher than the transfers back to the special levy tax fund. So about $44,000 of the special levy tax was used for purposes other than what that tax was uh, established, for what that levy was established. And under the Class II Township Code, if a treasurer in a township uses special levy tax funds for any other purpose, uh, than what that levy was created for. It's a class, it's a third degree misdemeanor. I sent that all to Jack Denary. He sent me a letter, he said, the county doesn't have the money for an in-depth forensic analysis, a forensic audit, and he's not going to go back that far. So that's said and done. In the spring of 2017, uh, the voters in Franklin Township passed uh, a question on the ballot to return to three supervisors instead of having five. Thank you, Doug Smith, for helping me get that question before the voters. It will save the voters $3,750 every year. Now, I questioned the use of the special levy tax fund in 2012. Mr. Reba, I'm sorry, but your time has expired. I My time's about up. I apologize. But we're strict with that. It's not just you, trust me. Oh, that's <laughs> we right. appreciate your I time. I will close by saying that no good deeds, and I think I did do good deeds, no good deeds go unpunished. And Lincoln said that men sin by keeping silent when they should protest. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else wish to address council tonight? Go right ahead. If you could just give us your name and municipality, and then you're mm -hmm. off and running. Well, I'm Adam Krauss. I'm here with. Um, I'm from Edinburgh. I'm here with Joshua Higgins from Anderson. Joseph Higgins. They're from Harbor Creek. Harbor Creek. Creek. And uh, very kind of here to talk about Emily and what's it all, what, what, what it is all about. So, um, Emily is a youth organization for young men ages 12 to 21, and it's all about teaching them how to be good, bad, loyal citizens for the country, and 
we do a whole bunch of activities and we also have cardinal virtues to help us learn stuff like that. And the cardinal virtues are flavor love, reverence for sacred things, comradeship, courtesy, fidelity, holiness, and patriotism. And some of the activities that we do for GMA, one of them is a we had a spaghetti dinner. It was a fundraiser to help the dyslexia center in Erie. We also have a uh, garden bed at the Garden of Erie in Edinburgh, and gar Garden of Gin in Edinburgh, and we have and we make we grow fresh fruit produce for the food pantry in Edinburgh, and sometimes we go to the soldiers and the sailors. Uh, home and also the VA hospital and sometimes play bingo with the vets and Deemly isn't just a theory thing we have people from all around the county as we've said Edinburgh and Harbor Creek and also Girard and other places and also we have a whole bunch of people from around the state that just and also around the country and also around the world that also follow these um, virtues and other things like that. And it's really, really nice. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Great job. <laughs> You're glad that three minutes is up, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else from the public wish to be heard tonight? Okay, seeing none come forward, we'll go forward with our meeting. Is there a minute? I'm sorry, a motion to approve the minutes from our June 12th Second. meeting. Moved by Mr. Leon, seconded by Mr. Horton. Are there any uh, comments or changes, corrections to those minutes? Mr. Smith, roll call, please. On the minutes, Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Leone? Yes. Mrs. Lowell? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. Reports of county officials, the county executive or her designee? None tonight, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Sparber. Uh, Finance Committee, Mrs. Lowell? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, last Thursday, we <coughs> had a meeting at uh, 4 o'clock in the caucus room. And uh, we talked about uh, what we were going to put on the agenda. We decided in, under new business, A through U. And then uh, W again through double E. And um, that's um, all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Lowell. Any questions regarding the finance meeting last week? Personnel committee, Mr. Horton. Yes, personnel committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Personnel committee met last Thursday, 7-19-2018, immediately following the finance meeting. We shaped the agenda for uh, the topic for tonight's agenda, and that concludes my report. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Horton? Reports of other members of council. Mr. Anderson, your first time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to give a brief report <coughs> on the uh, NACO, uh, National uh, Association of County Organizations. Uh, which is our uh, federal lobbying group uh, that we're associated with through CCAP, County Commissioners Association of Pennsylvania, which is our statewide lobbying group. And uh, I was uh, in attendance at the uh, annual uh, conference as well as County Executive Kathy Dahlkamper. And uh, uh, there was a lot of business that was discussed. Uh, Pennsylvania uh, has a uh, member from Berks County uh, who is going to be seeking second vice presidency next year uh, which will put Pennsylvania in a, a very uh, good position in, in the years to come uh, with the national organization if he succeeds at that so uh, we wish uh, Christian uh, Limbaugh uh, our best uh, in his endeavors uh, but also at their annual luncheon uh, Erie County was a recipient uh, through several different departments of uh, seven 
uh, awards from NACO, and uh, I thank all of the uh, employees, the staff, and the administration uh, deserve our acknowledgement of that, and so just want to make that acknowledgement tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, next is Mr. Leon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, t tonight I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, three-year plan. Uh, time and again, we use it different times a stock answer for the three-year plan. We try to agree with the administration. The three-year plan usually is decided on what we need for our budget for the next three years. It isn't something that uh, we stamp and say this is exactly what's going to happen because in three years there could be changes and there probably will be changes. Well this year I, you know, I, I looked at it and I said there are some issues in a three-year plan that are not addressed by this administration. And I, I, for one, will address one of them, but I also, as the chairman of the three-year plan, I indicated to every member of this council to put something together that they may feel is not in a three-year plan and they would have some kind of a beef with. So uh, kindly send that to uh, uh, Doug and he'll, he'll prepare something. Uh, I'd like to have it passed in the in next month, in the month of August, I believe the Home Rule Charter indicates that uh, the three-year plan must be presented to us by July, uh, and also our response must come prior to September. So uh, August would be fine for us to do that. Uh, and in fact, I'm only putting in one item, and the item that I'm putting in, I find it continues to be neglected by this administration. And I believe it needs to be addressed and put into the three-year plan so we can discuss this issue and resolve it <coughs> one way or another. And that issue is Pleasant Ridge Manor East. We have 14 acres of land out at Pleasant Ridge Manor East. We have a facility out there that year after year we're paying anywhere from forty-five to $60,000 a year just to keep it heated during the winter so that the place doesn't deteriorate. Well, uh, I give you my pledge, I will not vote for funding in any way, shape, or form until we sit down and discuss this issue with the administration. I seriously believe that this area and the 14 acres of land could be used to put in many of the areas that we're now renting. In fact, one area happens to be Erie County Care Management. And I keep hearing that, you know, everybody says that that's in the city of Erie and it's close and that's where people go. Well, recently we lost the CCIS program in the human services area and a private contractor took that over and they're now going to 12th and Powell. Well, it's a little further to 12th and Powell than it is to that Pleasant Ridge Manor East. So I don't want to hear any discussion about the fact that it's too far away even for that. In fact, at the present time, we're paying almost a half a million dollars in rent for Erie County Care Management. Uh, there are other areas that we're talking about. I, I believe drug and alcohol is going to go into a lease program. We have people out there in the, uh, uh, what is it, the Human Relations Commission is outside of the Erie County government and we could probably bring them into a place like that. Uh, again, I'm, you know, I'm a little disappointed that this hasn't happened in the past. But I, I intend to make an issue out of it in very, very short. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Leon. I uh, thank you for chairing that committee and for Mr. Horton and Mrs. Lowell for agreeing to serve. Next is Mrs. Lowell. I just wanted to uh, reiterate, reiterate that uh, I'm first very thankful for the library branch to open up and have us here tonight. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, next is Mr. Horton. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Yes, with a heavy heart again that I come here, uh, safe citing the 24 Wall Street USA Today article of November 3rd of last year. It's been 263 days since that article came out citing New York, Pennsylvania as the worst place in America uh, for quality of life and other economic variables for African Americans. Since that article, uh, an additional article came out citing the 16501 zip code, which runs right downtown, uh, 
almost in the heart of the Erie Comprehensive Plan as being the poorest zip code in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And the East and West Buffs are being gentrified or codified. It's almost as if uh, they're legislating uh, people's poverty against them. The Erie Refocus Plan and all those other plans that are supposed to be working simultaneously together to increase the tax base or, or raise the median income doesn't provide uh, any information on what you're going to do with the people that are being displaced. And if, as if that wasn't enough, uh, I'm embarrassed because I haven't been able uh, to raise any awareness that would result in any action uh, that would start to turn those things around. I haven't done anything. My colleagues haven't done anything. Uh, County Executive Dahlkemper hasn't done anything. City Council hasn't done anything. I can name them all one by one, if you like. Uh, the new mayor or the old mayor hasn't said anything. Our state representatives haven't said anything. In an election year, no matter. Uh, at that. In fact, the silence is deafening. We don't even hear talk about the community college uh, when everyone knows that that's a, a, a solid solution uh, to uplifting anyone's condition with education being the great, great equalizer. And it's, it's, it is as if that wasn't enough. We come, we want to propose alertness, 10 year tax abatements, north of the Bayfront Highway our school, the city of Erie School District, uh, buildings are crumbling, and the children's and the families' lives are crumbling along with them as they tell us how great it is, and we cram 35, 40 kids in a classroom. All one has to do is to take a trip up Peach Street to Craig and Peach Street, where you have the picture of all Americans, Erie's own native son, Fred Belitnikoff and Belitnikoff Field, and see that you have the, still have the two-lane cinder track that Mr. Belitnikoff probably ran on. Uh, the family should be embarrassed to have his name on the field, on the track. If you go 10 miles in any direction, whether it's Mill Creek, or Fairview, or Girard, or General McLean, or Harbor Creek, or Iroquois, you see the nice things that they have, and the nice track. Yet we want to do alert. And I won't be silent about it anymore. Uh, I'm embarrassed that several of my colleagues here have came proposing alert with only one even living inside the city. Uh, districts that don't even represent the city are saying give away city money, uh, give away city tax dollars to those who are already wealthy. I'm embarrassed by it. I don't think anything north of the Bayfront Highway <laughs> should have a, it's bad enough to do events and everything associated in a fix uh, to the convention center doesn't pay taxes. Uh, but with the Crumlin School District, the audacity to even consider that. Uh, and I would find it very hard pressed to believe that the financial watchdog uh, that's been appointed over that district due to its financial circumstances I would be hard pressed to believe that he was, or the district was support alert as well. And so we came here, and I thank my colleagues for offering up a resolution that we forwarded up to the state delegation that we haven't heard anything back from, and our desire to attach community benefit agreements to any recipient of, of RAC P, uh, RCAP funding. I believe that. Uh, if a developer gets five or ten million dollars in grant money, not a loan, but grant money, uh, I believe that that person, such a person, should be running to say, where do I pay my taxes? Not, oh, by the way, uh, I need a ten-year tax break uh, in addition to that. I think anyone who thinks other than that uh, 
really doesn't have poor people's best interests at heart. Uh, and so uh, it's very difficult for me to vote on some of the things uh, that are on this side, on this agenda. And it will be very difficult for me to vote on some things in uh, agendas to come. Uh, as long as that definite silence uh, continues and no action from this body or any other body. It comes with a <coughs> lot of programs suggesting that rising tide should lift all boats. Well, I'm here to tell you that a rising tide sometimes comes in a community like a tsunami. Uh, and it doesn't lift boats. It, wreck, it crashes lives and it wrecks communities. And it doesn't lift all boats. And there are, there are boats that aren't being lifted. And there are people being left, around, left behind with their own tax dollar. Uh, and so I won't bore you with that anymore, but if you want to hear more, come to the next yeah, county council meeting on the road, because uh, we're going to be having a, a healthy dialogue about it going forward. Uh, I believe that Erie County's uh, primary mission should be human services, and we should be looking out of, over, over those young people, uh, children, seniors, all 280,000 residents who are in need, we should be endeavoring to meet the human need and to uplift their human condition. Uh, and I, I, I think we're getting away from that. Shame on us. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Horton. Anybody else that did not want the mayor indicate they wanted to make a report earlier or change their mind? Okay, moving on to old business. Is there, a, before we uh, begin with the agenda, is there a motion to amend tonight's agenda? Mrs. Lull. I'd like to amend the agenda. First of all, correcting J. Uh, it should say second reading on the old business, moving into the new business, second reading for B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, and T. Uh, is there a, I will just say that I, uh, as a member of council, I'm going to uh, use my prerogative to have the second reading of uh, Ordinance 94 for the Bureau of Grants separated out, but I'm good with all the others. Uh, is there a second to Mrs. Lowell's second motion? Seconded by Mr. Anderson. Any discussion on the many nights agenda in the way presented? Mr. Smith, uh, roll call on uh, everything but item uh, K at the moment for amending tonight's agenda. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Leon? Yes. Mrs. Law? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. Uh, regarding uh, Ordinance Number 94, I will just echo what uh, Mr. Horton had said earlier regarding that. Uh, we didn't get these uh, amendments till 4 o'clock this afternoon. They, as far as I can gather, they weren't discussed in finance last week. So obviously there's been uh, sidebar discussions uh, since then that have been finalized at least at 4 o'clock, which is not improper, uh, provided the Sunshine Act is not violated. Uh, but it's a, a indicative, again, of how the business of this council is being conducted. I warned my members, I, I think somewhat forcefully, but also uh, as a colleague, that that is not the way we should conduct business. And this is just another example of it, and I'm uh, disappointed that it uh, is being done so in that way. The uh, amendments that we have in front of us still indicate uh, gaming funds where council uh, committed itself uh, to moving all of the grants to other organizations to only the general fund uh, so we could free those uh, gaming fund dollars to uh, other purposes uh, and I just think uh, certainly uh, that if there are this many uh, amendments to an ordinance that we ought to let it go through the normal process um, in the end I I think Tom wrote a very good ordinance I don't have a problem with creating a quote-unquote bureau because that's really what it is anyway it's just a it isn't anything more than a word we're not creating a personnel actions and things like that. But I think to codify it in the administrative code, I can speak from 15 years of experience. I'm sure Mr. Leon can speak from 40 years experience. If you don't codify it in the administrative code, you just make it easier to change and things are far too easy to change in county government. 
and we're just, I think, just setting ourselves up to when our mind changes in two years, we'll just change it back. Uh, but it's just, it's just something that's just being pushed through too quick for my uh, preference. So I will vote against moving it to a second reading for that purpose. Mrs. Fatika. Chair, um, what's in this ordinance is essentially, uh, what's in this amendment part of the ordinance is essentially everything that was in the resolution. And it was with um, council's suggestion that we wanted to move it to an ordinance rather than a resolution to give it a little more teeth. So this really isn't a new piece of um, information. This is everything that was there. So I will be asking that it move um, to a second meeting so that we can proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Smith, roll call, please. On uh, moving this to a second meeting. On the motion, Mr. Horton. No. Mr. Leone? Yes. Mrs. Lull? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Dr. Faust? No. Okay, that uh, is a, a, a met approval to move to a second read, so we will consider that tonight. Okay, so with that, we have our um, uh, agenda amended. Moving on to old business, a second read of ordinance number 54, please, and title only. A second reading of ordinance number 54, 2018, 23rd, 2018 general fund budget, supplemental appropriation of $1,096 for change in non-bargaining pay plan system operator <coughs> position. So, so moved. moved, second. Moved by Mrs. Fatika and seconded by Mrs. Lull. Is there any discussion regarding this ordinance? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Leon. <coughs> Again, I'm not, you know, I, I, there's 12 items on the old business, which includes, as far as I'm concerned, problems. The issues in this, all 12 of the items, should have been, have been addressed one at a time, uh, not 12 items at once. Uh, were mistakes made as far as the pay plan? I agree, there probably were mistakes made. But it's difficult for me to understand how we could just say, after five months, five months with the pay plan, and say, okay, we're going to have to make these changes, and these are 12 changes that we're going to make. We're going to increase the pay of 12 various individuals. And, you know, I, I, don't want to, I don't want to belabor the issue, but this should have been done probably after a year of reviewing what went on as far as the pay plan is concerned. Uh, in fact, right now, I wish I hadn't even voted for the pay plan because what's happening that I can see with these 12 items are the same things that would have happened if we'd had the old pay plan. They'd still be coming in here and saying, well, we're gonna change the job description so they need more money and we're gonna give them more money. I'm sorry, but uh, like I said, I won't vote for any one of these 12 issues. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Leon. Mr. Horton. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm going to echo some of what Mr. Leon stated. I stated in meetings past before this body. I uh, spent a lot of, I, I co chaired the pay plan committee. And I'm very disappointed that just four and a half months in, we're back here when the consultant clearly stated that the one sure way for the pay plan not to succeed if we start monkeying around with it. He, he said that we would be right back where we, where we started from with multiple classifications. Uh, and I'm wondering if I should have voted for the pay plan as well. Uh, but having done so, uh, and I truly believe that we have some great employees and that they deserve, uh, you know, to have family sustaining wages and they deserve uh, to be considered, um, you know, as, for the assets that they are. But when you spend two years uh, working on a plan and four months in, they want to come in and I believe first time it was 25 or 26 positions and now it's down to 12. I'm okay looking at the positions. I too said uh, on a one by one, case by case basis, we looked at some through the courts, but uh, I believe that at that same time, 
I reiterated uh, that we should at least wait a year uh, to be considered or reconsidering uh, or at least seen uh, measuring uh, the success or the failures uh, of the pay plan. Uh, and I just don't think it's prudent uh, to go in and start awarding pay raises and position changes uh, when the plan hasn't even been in place for a year. Uh, I'm perfectly willing to come back in a few months when it has <coughs> met the yearly, uh, the year, the annual mark. Uh, <coughs> consider not only these positions, but any other positions that we, we may have found uh, need to be adjusted, uh, but not, not three or four months in. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Horton. Mrs. Fatiga. Yes, well, while I do um, understand the, the concern, the, the group that are on the agenda right now for our vote are court positions that are filled um, and the job is being done in other court positions exactly the same. The problem is, is that there is not equity, equity through all of these positions, which is unfair. So in this case, um, taking these positions aside and just put, getting them done um, and correcting the pay grades, I think is important for us to do right now. Thank you, Mrs. Fatigue. Anybody else? Mr. Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I have great respect for the, the work that uh, Mr. Horton and Mr. Leone have done on the pay plan. Uh, it certainly preceded my time, uh, as I've mentioned at, at several previous meetings. Uh, but I'm, I'm a little confused because during several meetings we, we did have discussions, particularly at the meeting with the consultant, uh, that we were going to deal uh, with the positions that are on the agenda. There was consensus to that and that these were the only positions we were going to deal with. There was originally 28 positions that came down. Uh, tonight we're dealing with 12. I, I had strongly stated at our last meeting uh, that I will not vote on any of the other positions until Mr. Leone's committee, which consists of Mr. Horton and, and Ms. Lowell, uh, com completes the work that they're doing on those other positions. Uh, but I feel that we are at risk, in, in potentially in Erie County, uh, in some of these positions uh, that are out of class. Uh, there is some adjustments that need to be made. Uh, I certainly uh, re respect uh, that uh, there's some contention with how these positions were brought down to council. Uh, I think there could have been a, a better way uh, to bring for the administration and council to be working together on this. I've stated that previously. Uh, so I will not vote on any other positions in the pay plan, as I've said, outside of these positions. Uh, but because of the amount of discussion we've had on these positions and uh, the, the consensus, I believe, it has existed amongst council members. I will support voting the, on these positions tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Uh, I will just say that I, you know, I echo what uh, Mr. Horton and Mr. Leon had expressed as uh, their concerns, and I really started that way in a, in a hard way to begin with. But after talking things over with uh, Mr. Felice, who was the consultant for us on the pay plan, and also the representatives from the courts that. Uh, these particular positions really were uh, misgraded to begin with that in the uh, the issue of fairness where people are doing the same work they should be at the same grade uh, in these particular instances I'm willing to go forward but I'll be hesitant to address those things in the future unless there really is a strong case and, and in this particular case I think a good enough case was made to go forward so with that let's have uh, uh, a vote on ordinance number 54 please Mr. Smith Mr. Leon no Mrs. Lowell? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatica? Yes. Mr. Horton? No. Dr. Faust? Yes. Second reading of ordinance number 55, please, in title only. A second reading of ordinance number 55, 2018. 24th, 2018 General Fund Budget, Supplemental Appropriation of $11,911 for Change in Non-Bargaining Pay Plan, Court Administrative Officer 2. 
So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Fatika and seconded by Mrs. Lowell. Is there any discussion? Mr. Smith, roll call, please. On Ordinance 55, Mrs. Lowell? Yes. Mr. Rastatter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Mr. Horton? No. Mr. Leone? No. Dr. Faust? Yes. Second reading of ordinance number 56, please, in title only. Second reading of ordinance number 56, 2018, first 2018 domestic relations fund budget, supplement appropriation of $1,175 for change in non bargaining pay plan, deputy director. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Fatika and seconded by Mrs. Lowell. Is there any discussion? Some of you, by the way, are new to council meetings, so I should have explained earlier. If we have an ordinance in front of us, it has to go through a process of two readings before we vote on it. We've obviously moved that up on some of these tonight uh, to take action a little bit sooner. Uh, if it's not an ordinance, it only requires one reading, so you'll see that with resolutions and other actions on our agenda tonight. If things are still at a first reading, we'll just read into the record and vote on it the next time. So with that, a uh, vote on... Uh, Roll call vote on ordinance number 56, please. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Mr. Horton? No. Mr. Leone? No. Mrs. Law? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. Second reading of ordinance number 57, please, on title only. Second reading of ordinance number 57, 2018, 25th, 2018 general fund budget, supplemental appropriation of $400 for change in non bargaining pay plan, deputy director. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Fatika and seconded by Ms. Mrs. Lowell. Is there any discussion? Mr. Smith, roll call, please. On ordinance 57, Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Mr. Horton? No. Mr. Leone? No. Mrs. Lowell? Yes. Mr. Rastatter? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. Second reading of ordinance number 58, please, on title only. Second reading of ordinance number 58, 2018. Second 2018 domestic relations fund budget. Supplemental appropriation of $3,518 for change in non bargaining pay plan, senior officer positions. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Fatika and seconded by Mrs. Lowell. Is there any discussion? Also, for those of you that may be new to council meetings, mostly if, if it looks like there's a lack of uh, discussion tonight, that isn't necessarily purposeful. Most of that, those discussions and, and uh, debates on the particular issues take place at our finance meeting the previous week. So uh, there has been further discussion on each of these items. Uh, so with that, a uh, roll call vote on ordinance number 58, please. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Mr. Horton? No. Mr. Leone? No. Mrs. Law? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. Second reading of ordinance number 59, please, on title one. A second reading of ordinance number 59, 2018, 26, 2018 general fund budget. Supplemental appropriation of $1,196 for change in non bargaining pay plan, five senior officer positions. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Fatika and seconded by Mrs. Lowell. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please, Mr. Smith. On ordinance 59, Mr. Horton? No. Mr. Leone? No. Mrs. Lowell? Yes. Mr. Rastatter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. People on YouTube tonight are going to think they're caught in a loop the way we're going here. <laughs> Second reading of ordinance number 60, please, and title only. <laughs> A second reading of ordinance number 60, 2018, third 2018, domestic relations fund budget, supplemental appropriation of $3,890 for changing non bargaining pay plan supervisors. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Fatika and seconded by Mrs. Lowell. Is there any discussion? Mr. Smith, roll call, please. On Ordinance 60, Mr. Leone? No. Mrs. Lowell? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. 
Mr. Horton? No. Dr. Faust? Yes. Second reading of ordinance number 61, please, in title only. A second reading of ordinance number 61, 2018, 27, 2018 general fund budget, supplemental appropriation of $1,323 for change in non-bargaining pay plan, domestic relations supervisors. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Fatika and seconded by Mrs. Lowell. Is there any discussion? Mr. Smith, roll call, please. An ordinance 61, Mrs. Lowell. Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Mr. Horton? No. Mr. Leone? No. Dr. Faust? Yes. Second reading of ordinance number 62, please, in title only. Second reading of ordinance number 62, 2018, 28, 2018 general fund budget, supplemental appropriation of $2,636 for change in non-bargaining pay plan, clerk typist to administrative clerk. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Fatika and seconded by Mrs. Lowell. Is there any discussion? Mr. Smith, roll call, please. An ordinance 62, Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Mr. Horton? No. Mr. Leone? No. Mrs. Lowell? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. Second reading of ordinance number 63, please, in title only. Second reading of ordinance number 63, 2018, 29, 2018 general fund budget, supplemental appropriation of $4,777 for change in non bargaining pay plan. IT specialist to data administrator. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Fatika and seconded by Mrs. Lowell. Is there any discussion? Mr. Smith, roll call, please. An ordinance 63, Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Mr. Horton? No. Mr. Leone? No. Mrs. Lowell? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. Second reading of ordinance number 67, please, in title only. The second reading of ordinance number 67 of 2018, 31st 2018 general fund budget, supplemental appropriation of $914 for change in non bargaining pay plan supervisor. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Fatika and seconded by Mrs. Lowell. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please, Mr. Smith. An ordinance 67, Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Mr. Horton? No. Mr. Leone? No. Mrs. Lowell? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. Second reading of ordinance number 68, please, in title only. A second reading of ordinance number 68, 2018, 32nd, 2018 general fund budget. Supplemental appropriation of $23,348 for change in non bargaining pay plan, court solicitor. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Fatika and seconded by Mrs. Lowell. Is there any discussion? Mr. Smith, roll call, please. On ordinance 68, Mr. Horton? No. Mr. Leone? No. Mrs. Lowell? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. Okay, a first reading of ordinance number 84, please, in title only. A first reading of ordinance number 84, 2018, amending the Administrative Code of Erie County. Department of Planning, Article 2C9. Second reading of ordinance number 85, please, in title only. A second reading of ordinance number 85, 2018, 40th, 2018 general fund budget, supplemental appropriation of $20,000 and creation of line item for P Corp loss prevention grant. So move. Second. 
Moved by Mr. Leone and seconded by Mr. Anderson. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please, Mr. Smith. On Ordinance 85, Mr. Leone? Yes. Mrs. Law? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Patika? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. Second reading of ordinance number 86, please, and title only. A second reading of ordinance number 86 of 2018, 41st 2018 general fund budget, supplemental appropriation of $2,314 and new line item for donations to Veterans Treatment Corps. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Horton and seconded by Mr. Leone. Is there any discussion? Mr. Smith, roll call, please. On Ordinance 86, Mrs. Law? Yes. Mr. Rastatter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Spatika? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Leone? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. Second reading of Ordinance Number 87, please, and title only. A second reading of Ordinance Number 87, 2018. 2018 Children and Youth Services Fund Budget, revised expenditures of $5,000 and creation of line item due to court ordered placement. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Horton and seconded by Mrs. Fatika. Is there any discussion? Roll call please, Mr. Smith. On Ordinance 87, Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Leone? Yes. Mrs. Law? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. A second reading of ordinance number 88, please, in title only. Second reading of ordinance number 88, 2018, approval of addendum to 2015 interagency agreement between the County of Erie and Mill Creek Township for public safety radio system usage. So moved. Second. second. Moved by Mrs. Fatika and seconded by Mr. Anderson. Is there any discussion? Mr. Smith, roll call, please. On Ordinance 88, Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Leone? Yes. Mrs. Law? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. Okay, do I have a motion to approve ordinances number 89 through 93, approving the intergovernmental cooperation agreements with Harbor Creek Township, with Northeast Township, with Northeast Borough, Wesleyville Borough, and Lawrence Park Township to, for the County of Erie to assume dispatch services through the 911 call center at the Erie County Public Safety Building. So, so moved. Moved. Second. moved by uh, Mrs. Fatika and seconded by Mr. Leon. Is there any discussion regarding those one, two, three, four, five ordinances? Mr. Smith, roll call on those five, please. On ordinances 83 through 89 through 93, Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Leone? Yes. Mrs. Law? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. Okay, a second reading of ordinance number 94, please, and title only. A second reading of ordinance number 94, 2018, creation of policy for disposition of grants to other organizations, funding from gaming or the general fund. Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Why don't we get it on the floor first, then okay, we can do sure. that. Okay, yeah. Somebody want to make a motion? I make a motion. Moved by Mr. Anderson. I'll second. Seconded by Mrs. Lull. Any discussion? Mrs. Lull. Okay, I'd like to uh, move to amend ordinance number 94, uh, changing the face sheet and uh, replacing uh, the exhibits A, B, and C with the new exhibits A and B. And then on the face sheet where it says um, after, um, at the, that the deadline would be uh, on uh, the end of this month, in uh, beginning in 2018, I'd like to make that August 31st for the first year. Second. Moved by Mrs. Lawl and seconded by Mr. Anderson. Is there any discussion? 
Mrs. Lowe, would you be willing to entertain amendments or to change that motion somewhat to remove references to gaming funds and other funds to reflect the general will of council last year's budget deliberations? I'd like to leave it the way it is. Right, thank you. Any further discussion on that amendment? <coughs> on the amendment, please, Mr. Smith, roll call. Mr. Horton? No. Mr. Leon? Yes. Mrs. Law? Yes. Mr. Ratstetter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Dr. Faust? No. Did any other member of council wish to uh, entertain a motion regarding the re uh, removal of references to gaming or other funds in this particular ordinance as so amended moved. at the moment? Okay, that's moved by Mr. Horton as our second. As a member of council, I'll express my prerogative to second that motion. So a roll call on to further amend this ordinance to remove the references of gaming funds or other <coughs> funds, which just generally reflects the will of what council wanted at the end of last year anyway. Mr. Smith, roll call, please. On the motion, Mr. Leone. Would you explain that one more time? Yes, this would just further amend this ordinance to remove references to gaming funds in some cases it states other funds not only on the face sheet but on the, on the first page of the application in the first paragraph uh, that really reflects what the will of council was at our budget deliberations last year okay okay mr smith roll call please uh, mr leon no mrs law no mr rastetter no Mr. Anderson? No. Mrs. Fatika? No. Mr. Horton? Yes. Dr. Fast? Yes. Right, that amendment is defeated. Any further discussion on this ordinance as amended? I will only say that uh, you know this particular ordinance, it meets many of the uh, objectives that I had championed regarding these uh, grants or other organizations last year. I'm not particularly happy with the way that this council is going about its business, and this our ordinance is reflective of that. It does not meet all the objectives that I would have wished, uh, but that's democracy. You don't win them all. Uh, it meets enough of them, but I will vote in favor of this ordinance when we get to the roll call. Mr. Smith, roll call. Please. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Anderson. I uh, want to uh, commend uh, Councilwoman Fatika uh, for the original ordinance that she put forward, or the original resolution that she put forward. Uh, the work that she has done and the patience uh, and listening uh, that she has done with other members of her council colleagues, uh, and finally moving this to an ordinance. Uh, I, I commend her for all of that, for her patience, her deliberation, uh, and all of Erie County should commend her for the work uh, that she's done on this particular resolution now tonight to become an ordinance and I also want to uh, commend the work that Councilwoman Lowell uh, has done. Uh, Councilwoman Lowell has been a strong advocate for more than 10 years for Erie County to step up and have the accountability and responsibility to put, put forward a resolution slash ordinance for us to have a grant application and policies and procedures to follow. Uh, this is a long time coming. Uh, I am honored to work with both of these councilwomen uh, with the work that they've done. I think we've put together fantastic legislation tonight. Uh, the blame can no longer be on the grant recipient. The blame should be where it always should have been, on county council and the administration for not having any policies and procedures put in place. But we're not talking about the negative. We want to talk about the positive. And moving forward, putting this ordinance together, we will be able to uh, correct those mistakes and it will no longer uh, be on the shoulders of the grant recipient to be accused of, of any potential wrongdoing. Uh, we, we will uh, be able to, to work with the, the uh, grant recipients in, in a fair and impartial manner across the board. And this tonight, I am very proud 
uh, to stand up and support it, to have worked on it, uh, and to put forward for the residents of Erie County uh, what I feel is going to be something fair and equitable across the board, uh, and also uh, shows the fiscal responsibility of this council. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Any further discussion? Mr. Smith, roll call, please, on ordinance number 94. Mrs. Law? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Matika? Yes. Mr. Horton? No. Mr. Leon? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. Second reading of ordinance number 95, please, and title only. Mr. Chairman, is this a first, first reading, reading of 95? Did we leave this one of the first? I apologize. Yes. First reading of ordinance number 95. Just wanted to be sure. Thank you. First reading of ordinance number 95, 2018. Amending bylaws in the administrative code for the Erie County Planning Commission, repealing inconsistent language. Okay, now a second reading of ordinance number 96, please, in title only. A second reading of ordinance number 96, 2018, 2018 drug and, al uh, drug and alcohol services fund budget. Revised expenditures of $15,000 for creation of overtime expense line. So moved. Moved by Mr. Leone, seconded by Mr. Anderson. Is there any discussion? Mr. Smith, roll call, please. On Ordinance 96, Mr. Rastatter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Leone? Yes. Mrs. Law? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. Second reading of Ordinance Number 97, please, and title only. A second reading of ordinance number 97, 2018, approving a single vendor contract for lot paving project at the Iroquois Avenue Library Branch. So, so moved. Moved by Mr. Leone and seconded by Mr. Anderson. Is there any discussion regarding ordinance number 97? Mr. Smith, roll call, please. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Leone? Yes. Mrs. Law? Yes. Mr. Rastatter? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. Refresh my memory. Did we move 98 to a second as well? Or did we leave that as a first? Second. Second. First? Second. Oh, first? Oh, no, that second. Was, that, I believe we, was my notes. I believe we moved that to second. That is item. Yeah, that's the one, that's the one that Andre and Carol had as a second. Yeah, we moved that to second. Okay. That's the bargaining unit position, right? Well, to be safe, could we just reiterate a motion, Mrs. Lowell, to am amend tonight's agenda, just in case we're, our memory are, are fa is faulty, to just, to, just to move that to a second reading? The agenda to make yes. Z uh, oh, item all right. In um, new business, a second reading. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Second for I'm uh, sorry. Moved sure. by Mrs. Lowell. Is there a second to that? Second. Second by Mr. Anderson. Is there any discussion? Let's just just in case formally move that to a second. We did it the first time. Thank you. Mr. Smith, roll call. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Mr. Horton? No. Mr. Leon? No. Mrs. Law? Uh, yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. Okay, so let's have a second reading of ordinance number 98, please, and title only. A second reading of ordinance number 98, 2018. 2018 Children and Youth Services Fund Budget revised expenditures to change position grade from Account Clerk 1 to Fiscal Technician. So moved. Second. second. Moved by Mrs. Fatika and seconded by Mrs. Lull. Is there any discussion? Roll call please, Mr. Smith. On Ordinance 98, Mr. Horton? No. Mr. Leone? No. Mrs. Lull? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. 
Okay, a second reading of ordinance number 99, please, on title only. A second reading of ordinance number 99, 2018, 7th, 2018 public health fund budget, supplemental appropriation of $84,433 for increased HIV AIDS grant funding, creation of position and line items. So, so moved. Move. Second. Moved by Mrs. Fatika and seconded by Mr. Horton. Is there any discussion regarding ordinance number 99? Roll call, please, Mr. Smith. Mr. Leone? Yes. Mrs. Lal? Yes. Mr. Rastatter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. Second reading of ordinance number 100, please, in title only. So I move. A second reading of read. ordinance 100, oh, 2018. Second, 2018 Children and Youth Services Fund budget. Supplemental appropriation of $42,770 for Child Welfare Education Leadership Program temporary positions. So moved. Moved by Mr. Anderson. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Fatika. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please, Mr. Smith. At Ordinance 100, Mrs. Law? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Leon? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. <coughs> Second reading of Ordinance Number 101, please, and title only. Second reading of Ordinance Number 101, 2018, First 2018 Erie County Care Management Budget, Supplemental Appropriation of $110,318 for creation of three full-time coordinated entry positions for homelessness programming. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Leone and seconded by Mrs. Fatika. Is there any discussion? Mr. Smith will call, please. An ordinance 101, Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Leone? Yes. Mrs. Law? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. A second reading of ordinance number 102, please, and title only. A second reading of ordinance number 102, 2018, first 2018 Drug and Alcohol Services Fund Budget, supplemental appropriation of $1,336,000, $1,336,000, $1,336,000, $1,336,000, $1,336,000, $1,336,000, $1,336,000, $1,336,000, $1,336,000, $1,336,000, $1,336,000, $1,336,000, $1,336,000, $1,336,000, $1,336,000, $1,336,000, $1,336,000, $1
Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Patika? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. Do I have a motion to approve the appointment of Shanta Pulliam to the Human Relations Commission? So moved. Moved by Mr. Gordon. Seconded by Mr. Anderson. Is there any discussion regarding that appointment? Mr. Smith, roll call, please. Mr. Leone? Yes. Mrs. Lal? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Matika? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. Do I have a motion to approve the sale of parcels from repository according to index numbers listed in item W through double E? So move. Moved by Mr. Leone, seconded by Mr. Horton. Is there any discussion regarding those sales? Mr. Smith, roll call, please. On the parcels, Mrs. Law? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Leone? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. We'll adjourn. Stands adjourned. Thank you for coming, everyone. <laughs>